1450 WRL here this Friday morning. It's time to talk about news, recent news from the past week or so of a state, local, and regional basis with Chris Graham of the Augusta Free Press. And uh, Chris, uh, one of the things that stands out, uh, we had uh, one of, uh, several lawmakers actually this week uh, and, uh, officially announced their intentions to run for uh, office, to run for re-election coming up in, in the fall. We, of course, have all of the House of Delegates and the state Senate seats up for grabs this November. And uh, in the region, in the 24th House District, uh, Republican Ben Klein made an official this week saying he's going to run for re-election. Yes, and Ben, of course, uh, you know, multiple terms representing the Rockbridge area and, and contiguous areas, including uh, Augusta County here, part of Augusta County for several years. And, uh, and Ben is someone who uh, has done well electorally, to say the least. Uh, you know, he's, he's after his first election win over Mimi Elrod, uh, when that seat came open, uh, I think that was back in 2002 or 2003 when Vance Wilkins uh, stepped down. Uh, that, and that was a r rather narrow victory, I think around 56 to 44 uh, in terms of percentages for, for Klein. Since that point, he's, he's done really well electorally. And, uh, and Ben is, you know, carving out a, a, a nice career in the House of Delegates. So, uh, seems to be a pretty safe seat for him. And, and that's something for him to build upon. Still a young guy. He's, uh, he's my age, so I like to say young guy. Uh, and, uh, and so Ben, yeah, Ben, Ben rolling that out there this week and doing it in an interesting way, too. Uh, the, uh, going around and, and using a, a tour of local manufacturing facilities in the, uh, uh, in the 24th district to uh, highlight, uh, you know, the economic issues that are out there for us all right now. So, uh, good announcement for Ben. I think he wrote it out well, and uh, we'll see what happens in November. But I think uh, I'm not hearing anything about maybe potential Democratic or independent challengers quite yet. But uh, you know, Ben has uh, has done well when he faces challenges in the past. Yeah, you know, uh, that's uh, going to be a good thing if you're an incumbent. Uh, when folks are talking about whether you can win re-election, uh, what the big question is is will you face a challenger? That's right. That's right. And and, uh, and and so and, and, and you know we, we see uh, in, in the redistricting uh, this year, uh, you know, certain seats were protected and certain seats maybe weren't. Uh, Ben's seat uh, in his district maybe uh, even more so uh, pushing towards the Republican side. It was already a pretty safe district. Uh, Steve Landis up in the 25th district, uh, his House seat, uh, he probably will not face a re-election challenge again this year. Uh, the 20th district, though, Dickie Bell's seat, it seems like if if if, if Democrats could have worked their way to a place where they could have gotten uh, one place where they could have an outside sliver of a hope here in the Valley that they could win a seat. It would be in that 20th district. And I don't know that it's going to be this year, uh, but Dickie Bell's seat, uh, uh, seat in the 20th district, which now includes Stanton and Waynesboro and parts of Nelson County, uh, could, you know, could be competitive down the road. But uh, I think the other seats in the area are still probably pretty solidly uh, Republican and, and will be for some time. You know, and uh, when, when it comes to uh, the statewide basis, uh, you know, I know last fall the Democrats on, on a national basis really took a big hit. I'm not sure that that uh, will occur, obviously, this November on a statewide basis. That seemed to be as much uh, furor, let's say, at a certain party uh, here in Virginia as there was last fall on, on a national basis. Yeah, I had a, a good conversation with a couple of uh, our Republican friends last week, and I think the sense on both sides is that uh, right now, that the, the the party stalwarts on both sides of the aisle are a little a little tired, you know, maybe a little fatigued right now. There's been so much activity, you know, dating back to the 2008 election, uh, Barack Obama and his win, and and Democrats sweeping both houses of Congress, and then 2010 and it goes the other direction. Of course, people will be very busy 2012 with the Alan Keene Senate race and sure. uh, the presidential battle. That's right. So. Uh, and, of course, Alan and Kane have already, you know, gotten things going. I, Tim Kane was in Stanton last week, among other places in the Valley, and, and I sat down and had a 10-minute interview with him one-on-one. -on -one, and uh, So those that race is already hot and heavy as if it is 2012. So, you know, the 2011 races probably will be more low-key than even, uh, you know, expected, I guess, uh, for, for state legislative races with no uh, governor or lieutenant governor or attorney general race on top of it. So, uh, yeah, but I think both sides are fatigued right now, and, you know, this will this will probably be a pretty quiet election season and, and maybe a ho-hum election season as far as any fireworks go, um, because we're, we are looking at 2012 already and, and get gearing up for the, uh, you know, the monumental battles that will be there. You know, and my guess is that in some cases, uh, when it comes to these local lawmakers from uh, the General Assembly, they're going to draw more fire uh, or more criticism from local government officials who were forced to raise uh, local real estate taxes because state lawmakers didn't raise any taxes. I would think that in some cases they would draw more heat from uh, their, their city and county uh, governmental officials than, let's say, your average everyday constituent out there. That's right. That's right. The, those in the know... And 
and you're right, that base includes local city councils, town councils, board of supervisors, school boards, uh, and, and then those who work in local government as well. Um, they, 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 they know that the uh, state's been passing a buck for the last several years and, and not happy about it. Uh, and so as much as it might be relatively easy for most lawmakers in a you know, gerrymandered Virginia to win re-election, and, and there will be some races across the state that are competitive, but for the most part it will be you know, a relatively quiet season. But that said... Once the job of governing gets to the to the uh, four, um, yeah, it's not easy uh, because those those legislators uh, legislators will hear quite a bit from um, those exasperated uh, local government officials, and then you know there there are plenty of people uh, the activist types who also again are, are very closely tied to to various issues. Uh, it's it's not been a pretty time really dating back to the first or second year of the Kane administration back in two thousand six two thousand seven. Uh, you know, Tim Kaine was in town last week, I mentioned, and, and he talked about how he, he did not come into, uh, he did not run for governor in 2005 to uh, cut the budget more than any, any, any governor in Virginia history. But uh, that being the case, uh, he, he happened to be governor during the, the worst recession dating back to the uh, Great Depression. And uh, so we, we've seen different agencies, different issues uh, face major cuts. And uh, it's not been a fun time, I'm sure, to be a legislator because you're, you're constantly hearing from people about what you're not doing instead of what you are doing. So it might be easy to win the election, but uh, the job is not any easier than it has been in the past. Hey, Chris, I know we usually focus on news on Fridays with you, but let's uh, do a quick uh, segment on sports because it's a big uh, sports weekend for UVA baseball, at least uh, tonight it is. You uh, have to win tonight to get to Saturday's ball game. Right now they're in the uh, Final Four taking on South Carolina in their bracket, uh, but they have to beat South Carolina twice to advance to the finals. Uh, would it be held uh, Monday, Tuesday, and if necessary on Wednesday. So uh, big games coming up tonight, and I guess what Saturday for the Cavaliers, but uh, that's a tall order to beat South Carolina once. That's an even taller order because you got to beat them twice. Yeah, and South Carolina peaking again like they did last year at the right time. Uh, the number four seed nationally, uh, but they dominated Virginia Tuesday night. Will Roberts, a pitcher who had gone into that game 11 and one, uh, they knocked him around. And uh, overall in that game, getting I think it was seven runs on 13 hits uh, against a Virginia pitching staff that was number one in the country in team ERA. And Will Roberts had a, had a personal ERA of 1.5 going into that game. Of course, the guy that threw a perfect game earlier this season. So um, the uh, what the, the the order is out there for the Cavs. Uh, what happened in that game with South Carolina on Tuesday night was uh, Will Roberts is, is a, a great control pitcher. He's uh, always around the plate, and South Carolina went up there. Instead of trying to work deep counts, uh, they were just trying to uh, hit balls when they when they saw them, basically, you know, not, not overthink it, basically. Uh, you see a good pitch, swing at it, and hit it, and uh, there were a lot of uh, long at bats where they were fouling pitches off and, and working Roberts, uh, you know, t t into throwing more hittable pitches, I guess you could say, and just a great approach there. And then offensively, the Cavs were maybe a little too aggressive on their side. Uh, uh, South Carolina pitching, uh, you know, to that aggressiveness and, and throwing some balls out of the zone, getting the Cavs out and, and hitting some weak ground balls uh, that they were trying to pull. Just to, overall, South Carolina dominated the game both ways, uh, and maybe even from the uh, coaching staff approach. Uh, but you know, now they now Virginia has their own scouting report on South Carolina. They know what they need to do, and they maybe meet, 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 uh, be a little more uh, selective at the plate. Uh, if Danny Holson pitches tonight, I say if because uh, uh, Brian O'Connor is at least leaving the specter out there that he might start Whit Mayberry, who was a, a occasional week uh, week starter, well weekday starter for the Cavs during the season, uh, and maybe saving Holson for Saturday uh, just to give him an extra day of rest. I expect Holson will get the start, and South Carolina started five left-handed hitters against Will Roberts on Tuesday. If they go with that same lineup today, or you know, at least keep three or four of those guys in, Holton is is really good against lefties. He's a lefty himself, so um, it could be interesting to see. You know, the Cavs have to win today. Uh, if if they win today, as I expect with Holton pitching, that would mean that uh, tomorrow is pretty much. Pitching by committee. Uh, Whit Mayberry would probably get the start, but uh, he would probably have a very short leash, and you'd see uh, Brian O'Connor run out a cast of thousands to uh, try to finish that game out. So, tough yeah, order. If the Cavaliers end up winning the national championship, it's going to be a heck of an achievement because they're going to have to win, uh, win four games, I suppose, uh, tonight, Saturday, and uh, two of the three, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They have to win four games in less than a week here. That's right, and, and what the, the big thing here, too, is... Uh, uh, not only you know having to win all these ball games in a short period of time, but 
Uh, you, you know, Holson, if he pitches tonight, uh, you would think that based on the concept of you know five days rest uh, or four days rest, that he would probably not be pitching, not be available until Wednesday to pitch, uh, which is game three. <laughs> so either that or he's pitching with short rest, which you know at, at, at a time of season like this for a young pitcher might not be the best idea. Uh, of course, Tyler Wilson won last night. He's ten and zero in the season. He might not be available till you know Tuesday, maybe Monday. Will Roberts will certainly be available. He'd probably be the game one starter. Uh, if he didn't have to pitch some tomorrow, because if they get to that stage, I'm sure Will Roberts is available for two or three innings tomorrow. So losing that game on Tuesday really threw EVA into a, into an interesting spot, because even if they do win two more games against South Carolina, uh, the, the pitching next week is, is not set up the way you'd like it to be for uh, a championship series round. So, uh, of course, on the other side of the bracket, maybe things will work out the same way over there. Florida is the, is the team with the advantage right now. They beat Vanderbilt. Uh, Vanderbilt. Although right now, it, it really is a great statement at this particular stage for the SEC. I mean, UVA can still break through and win the national championship, but uh, right now, three of the four teams in the Final Four are SEC, and uh, barring an upset, barring, uh, I guess, uh, you know, just as far as the teams with the inside track, it is shaping up, uh, unless UVA can break through with a couple of wins against South Carolina, it's shaping up as an all-SEC final. Oh, that's correct, and, uh, you know, the the debate goes on as as the years go on from the ACC side. At least we try to keep the debate going. That that we're the uh, that we we should be in position for that top conference ranking. But uh, but yeah, the SEC certainly proven it this year. Uh, you know they got more teams there to Omaha, Virginia, uh, Virginia, and North Carolina getting there. The, the the surprise that Florida State not able to get through and, and they, they being upset by Texas A&M in that Tallahassee regional super regional last week. Uh, kind of threw that thing, threw it off in that respect for for the ACC. But uh, Carolina being eliminated, losing twice to Vanderbilt, and if Virginia loses either tonight or tomorrow to South Carolina, they would have lost twice to South Carolina. So yeah, you know, it's one of those things where uh, you know it's it, it's hard because you you feel like you're failing, but if you're number two, the number two best conference in baseball, there's there's worse than that. Uh, certainly, the Big Twelve had two teams in this uh, College World Series, and they both lost. Uh, uh, their first two games and were eliminated, Texas and Texas A&M. So, uh, but, yeah, the ACC still has that glimmer of hope with Virginia, but Virginia's got a tall order as far as, well, not only if they can beat South Carolina twice, but then they'd have to go on, uh, you know, with, with a helter-skelter pitching rotation uh, for Monday, Tuesday, and possibly Wednesday next week against either Florida or Vanderbilt. So it uh, could be tough. I guess if, if you're a Virginia fan, what you root for is two wins tonight and, and then tomorrow and then uh, Vanderbilt maybe to win through because they're also in the same place. They've also had to up, upturn their pitching uh, rotation with a losing a limit, uh, an early elimination game or, or being thrown in the elimination round early. So, uh, so you know, if you, if you get there, hey, at this point, it's all just about winning. You know, Virginia knows you need to win four more games, and that's all it really focuses on right now anyway. Okay, Chris, what do we look for in the coming days in the Augusta Free Press? Well, what we look for is uh, some more baseball news. We'll, we'll, you know, it's, it's a politics time of year, too, with all the announcements out there for, for the uh, elections coming up in the fall. But uh, uh, the focus right now still on baseball. We'll get uh, whatever happens to Virginia, we'll let people know about. And, uh, and then uh, we'll get back to the serious business of making sure our government is, is working fine and our economy is uh, continuing to improve, we hope. Okay, Chris Graham with the Augusta Free Press. Uh, we'll come back for more of online. Here on AM 1450 WREL, right after this.